So we're going to spend the last few minutes of this video answering some of the questions that came in before the video was recorded from family members and students. Uh, thank you for submitting your questions. I know some of them were answered during the panel, and there were a few others that I'm going to try to answer right now. Before I jump into answering those questions, I do want to say that the school counselors themselves are always going to be a great resource to answer your questions throughout this process over the next year or two years or two and a half years, uh, depending on what grade level you're in. So reach out to us through email, give us a phone call. Uh, if you're a student in school, you can stop by our office if you have a quick question or certainly schedule an appointment with us. We're always happy to help through the post-secondary planning process at whatever point you're at. We're happy to answer your questions. So one of the questions I'm going to start with um, is what should parents, and I'll also add students, but what should parents be expecting of counselors during the process? And really the, the broad answer is that we're going to be a resource for you, as I was just saying, uh, for whatever questions you have, whatever support you may need, we're going to be pushing out lots of information that you can look through. Um, Ms. Kyra mentioned our post-secondary planning handbook earlier in the video. That's going to be a fantastic resource that's going to have answers to many of your questions, give you a great way to really understand the post-secondary planning process from start to finish and all of the different options that fall underneath post-secondary planning. Um, we're going to be available for meeting with students throughout the process as well. Students are actually going to be hearing from us soon about uh, how to schedule meetings uh, to talk about the um, post-secondary planning process for juniors. Sophomores are going to be hearing from us with information about career exploration, and we're going to try to make this as personal as possible for the students as they're going through the process as well. So um, expect to get a lot of information, expect to hear uh, lots of opportunities that are going to be coming through, and you can expect us to answer whatever questions you have. And if we don't have the answers, we'll be able to look into it for you or point you in the direction of where you can find answers as well. All right, so next question is about traveling for uh, study abroad programs and does it work for specific majors? Uh, not necessarily. So studying abroad can be an opportunity for any student that may be going to college. Uh, lots of different colleges have their own specific study abroad programs as well. It's possible to uh, do a study abroad program through another college, even while you're at a different one. Uh, the offices for for study abroad programs at different schools can explain all the different options for you, how it may connect to specific majors or how it could just be a general study abroad program. Uh, some may be geared more towards some majors, others could be very general um, and could just be a great learning experience for students. All right. So the next question uh, is how can a student make up for having not so stellar grades? Um, it, it's a great question and, and the answer to that is trying to connect with teachers, trying to understand learning style, trying to understand work habits so that they can and start to improve their grades. Um, grades are not the only thing that goes into this process also. You know, there's a lot of different factors that are considered for job applications, for college admissions, um, trying to connect with teachers, understand different ways of learning for classes, working with them and really engaging with them uh, can certainly be helpful for improving grades in classes. Um, I'll also say that if you are approaching college applications in senior year and you're looking back and thinking, you know what, your grades were not as good as you were hoping they would, and you're feeling like you may not uh, be able to go to your top choices, there's many students every year that start off at one place after high school and then transfer to another place. Uh, that's where sometimes community colleges come in. There's another question on here about is there uh, do colleges like seeing students taking community colleges and uh, community college classes? That could be something that could be great if you're looking at uh, possibly supplementing uh, your high school curriculum by taking a class outside or doing something called dual enrollment, which if you have questions, you can check in with your counselors. Um, but if students are starting at a two-year community college, it's possible to do really well there, even if you didn't do so well uh, in high school and then transfer to another school that you may be more interested in attending to finish out your four years of college. So that's always an option uh, if you're looking for ways to make up for grades that you're not as happy with. All right, uh, next question. What path in higher education should a student take when they're unsure of what field of study to go into? Um, that one, it's really open-ended. It's, it's not necessary to know exactly what it is that you'd like to do 
uh, in order to go to college or, or to start something off. Speaking for myself, I was somebody that changed my major, I think maybe five times when I was in school and I definitely did not come out of it majoring in what I thought I was going to major in. So uh, it's not absolutely necessary to know what it is that you want to do. It's a good idea to have an idea of some things you may be interested in, or at least know what you may not be interested in. Um, but go into applying to colleges with an open mind. Don't feel like you need to pick something uh, just because there may be other students or other people that have decided. It's, it's really absolutely not necessary. All right. Uh, next question. How do you get recruited to play for a four-year college, play sports for a four-year college? Um, I'm going to suggest, you know, talking with your coaches, talking with our high school athletic director, Ms. DiCarlo. They're going to be great resources to help you understand the athletic recruiting process, um, give you great advice on what you can be doing. You can also reach out to college coaches of schools that you're interested in. You're allowed to make contact with them uh, even before you're getting to applying to schools and before the recruiting process. There are rules about how coaches can contact you, but you're always free to contact them. One of the things I would suggest is seeing if there's some kind of contact card or information that you can provide to them. Sometimes coaches and teams and uh, institutions will have a way for you to share your information with them so that they can invite you to uh, different opportunities to learn more about their programs. Right. Uh, next question, do colleges look more at your weighted GPA or unweighted GPA? That's really going to depend on the college. Uh, in fact, many colleges, more than half, are likely going to recalculate your GPA even from what we provide them on your transcript. Now, from Westboro High School, we share the weighted and the unweighted GPA on your transcript, and we explain how those are calculated. Colleges may be looking at grades a little bit differently. They may include different classes that we don't include in the GPA, or they may not include classes that we do. And that is how they may be looking at it. So um, it really kind of depends on the institution. It's also a very fair question to ask. How is a college looking at GPA? Do you recalculate GPA from, this, from the transcript that we send? Uh, that, that's a very good question to ask and colleges will be more than happy to give you an idea of how they're looking at transcripts and GPAs. All right, um, next question. Are SAT or ACT prep classes valuable? Uh, the answer to that is it's really going to depend on the student and, and what you put into it. Some students find that they're extremely valuable. There's a lot of structure involved with SAT and ACT prep courses. Usually they're run once or twice a week over the course of a few weeks leading up to an exam date. Um, other students may find one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, very helpful and don't like the classroom setting. Uh, other students like studying on their own using practice materials that you can get for free or for fairly inexpensive uh, review books. So there's lots of different ways that you can prepare. It's really about what the student's preference is going to be and, and what they're going to get out of it um, based on the effort that they're going to be putting into the SAT or ACT prep course. All right. Um, next question. What tools are best to help students explore fields of interest and then how to find schools that offer those fields? Um, so I started mentioning before about some things uh, that we're going to be sharing opportunities for juniors and for sophomores about career exploration. Um, Naviance is really a fantastic tool that you can use both for career exploration activities and then connecting it to different colleges that may offer pathways to get into those careers. Um, so be on the lookout for more specific information about that. We're going to be pushing that out to sophomores very soon uh, for juniors. There are lots of different exploration options that you can do in there as well. Many of them you may have already done in Naviance, uh, something called the Do What You Are uh, personality inventory. There is the career interest finder. There are a lot of other different career tools that are kind of like surveys where you can learn a little bit more about yourself, what preferences you may have, and it'll point you in good directions for seeing what different careers could really fit your personality, your skills, your interests. Uh, and then it'll connect you to different college majors as well as different colleges that offer some of those majors. All right. Uh, next question. What should students be doing right now in order to have a stronger chance of getting into universities or college? Um, that's trying to continue to do well in school, engage with teachers, engage with classes, be a learner. And it's not just about the grades. It's about what you can get out of your education, how you can share that uh, within your applications. Um, some of the best teacher recommendations, for instance, 
uh, can come from teachers where a student hasn't gotten the greatest grade, but the teacher can share about what type of learner, what type of participant the student was in class to show that they are engaged with the learning. That can be really important. So that's one thing that we would certainly recommend. Um, staying involved with things that, that they've been enjoying or you know, being committed to responsibilities outside of school if you have responsibilities. Um, thinking about how you can explain your context, who you are to admissions officers within your application. There, there are many opportunities by uh, listing things you've been doing outside of school, within your personal statement and your essay, and just the way that you approach uh, which schools you're applying to, learning about them and seeing what are good matches for you. So, so those are the things that we think uh, would be very helpful as you're going through this process. Um, and then the next question, or really uh, looks like this may be the last question that we have right now. Um, how often should a student be coming to see their school counselor through the sen through senior year, or should they be visiting teachers and recommend for recommendations more? Um, the answer to that question is really it's going to be variable. Some students uh, meet with their counselors very regularly. Other students are more independent and check in with their counselor just a couple of times over the course of the process. Whatever makes most sense and is going to be most helpful for the students is what we're hoping for uh, in terms of contact with the counselors. Again, going back to teachers for teacher recommendations, have good engagement with the teachers while you're in classes, communicate with which teachers you may think you would wanna ask for recommendations. We usually suggest at least in the spring of junior year, close towards the end of the year to start asking some teachers or considering who they may want to uh, ask for recommendations. We'll talk a lot more about that process when we're meeting with the uh, students one-on-one -on -one in our junior meetings that are gonna be coming up. All right. so. Uh, if there are other questions that we didn't get to during the presentation, certainly, again, reach out to your school counselor. We'll be more than happy to answer them or look into them or, or give you an idea about how you can find them uh, as you're doing your own research. We are really thrilled that you were able to join us for this video and have a great night and enjoy uh, all of the uh, interesting things that you're going to find as you're going through post-secondary planning. Take care.